Hi everyone. I wish I could be with you in person for this workshop, but I am glad that Dr. Cliff Ho can be there to represent our office. Over these last few years, advancements in storage technologies have dramatically reduced costs and enhanced our ability to manage grid supply and demand. The deployment of energy storage needs to be at the center of our mission to move toward a cleaner and more reliable electric grid. The ability of storage to firm up capacity and act as a transmission asset is key to achieving our goal of providing 24-7 dispatchable clean power. The Department of Energy has set an ambitious target through its long duration storage shot. The goal is to reduce the cost of grid-scale energy storage by 90% for systems that deliver 10 or more hours of duration within the next decade. If we can do that, long-duration storage systems will provide grid operators with much-needed flexibility and dispatchability. That, in turn, can relieve grid congestion and significantly improve grid resilience. Currently, the U.S. has just over 30 gigawatts of energy storage, and the majority of that is still pumped hydro storage. The Department of Energy has projected that we will need about 160 gigawatts of short-duration storage, and we may need up to 460 gigawatts of long-duration energy storage installed by 2050. That is a 20-fold increase in energy storage needs. This is absolutely possible with the right strategic public and private investments today. That's what investing in America looks like, building a clean energy economy that lowers costs and delivers benefits to everyone. I've been working for years to deliver federal investments that accelerate the deployment of behind the meter and grid scale storage technologies. This includes passing the powerful tax credits in the Inflation Reduction Act for grid-scale storage systems and for business and home use of energy storage. Importantly, standalone energy storage assets are now eligible for the investment tax credit. The Inflation Reduction Act's production tax credits and domestic content provisions are also spurring massive capital investments in domestic battery manufacturing but we will still need to update federal and state level rules to allow storage services to be sold into the market. Energy storage should be able to participate in power markets on a level playing field with all of the alternatives. That's why I've called on FERC to convene a technical conference to ensure that grid operators are adequately valuing the benefits that storage provides. While we scale the storage technologies that are ready to deploy, we also need to keep investing in R&D and next generation storage technologies. I am particularly focused on long duration solutions that can provide days, even weeks of energy reserves. I passed bipartisan legislation in 2020 to align research and accelerate the development of long duration storage technologies and I secured substantial investments for demonstrations of grid-scale storage in the bipartisan infrastructure law. Recycling materials such as lithium, cobalt, nickel, and graphite will also be crucial for our onshoring of our energy storage supply chain and bringing down those costs. I am grateful to all of you here for working on these pressing challenges and emerging opportunities. And I know that Dr. Cliff Ho will provide you with a great overview of the federal resources that are available to support your innovative work. As a senior scientist at Sandia National Laboratories, Cliff worked on solar technologies, energy storage, and other decarbonization solutions. We have been lucky to have him serve on an extended assignment in my Senate office in Washington. And I hope this workshop will inspire all of you to keep pursuing innovative energy storage solutions. And please keep working with me as a partner in building a reliable, affordable, and clean energy future.